It's in West Virginia, California, and Newfoundland, and Whitby Island. Some people I actually know first because of where you're from. I say, oh, that must be Peter up there in Canada. We'll just give folks a couple more minutes to come in and then we'll get started. And um, if you have a candle, maybe go ahead and grab it. You don't have to. This is not a command, but I kind of like to have one with me. I'm also going to ask if you would uh, make sure you're on mute during our program, unless you're speaking, unless, you know, we're having a conversation. Otherwise, I think just for the sake of our listening please just check and make sure you stay on mute and jenna i think if you want to go ahead and greet folks i'll admit people while you're doing that and maybe i can introduce jenna who's going to introduce me <laughs> jenna kirkpatrick is going to introduce herself but she is representing evermore our hosts tonight I'm so grateful for them and uh, encourage you all to look up evermore.org and see all the good work that they're doing. And one of the greatest joys for me of getting to work with Evermore is that I've gotten to work with Jenna Kirkpatrick. Come on. Thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> um, hello and welcome everyone. As Rosemary said, I'm Jenna Kirkpatrick and I'm uh, the manager of outreach and engagement for Evermore. Evermore is a national nonprofit dedicated to making the world a more livable place for bereaved people. We advocate for meaningful policy change, um, advocate for advanced bereavement science, and cultivate innovative programming among communities nationwide. I'm also a poet and a bereaved mom. I believed wholeheartedly in the therapeutic act of writing. A friend once shared Rosemary's incredibly beautiful poem, watching my friend pretend her heart isn't breaking with me. When I read the lines on earth, just a teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh six billion tons. Six billion tons sounds impossible until I consider how it is to swallow grief. I wept and thought she understands. Rosemary's Precious light and energy is shared with all of us through her poetry and actions, and we are so honored that she is Evermore's first poet laureate. As the last stanza of her poem so eloquently states, there are many reasons to treat each other with great tenderness. One is the sheer miracle that we are here together on a planet surrounded by dying stars, and one is that we cannot see what anyone else has swallowed. Together, we are here to hold this space. Let's take a few seconds for some deep breaths and silence to acknowledge all of our precious light and energy. Please join me in offering a very warm welcome to our gracious friend, whose heart is as open as the sky above us, Rosemary Patola Traumer. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Thanks every single one of you who showed up tonight. Thank you for coming and supporting yourself and each other. And I wanna start with the lines of a poem that I don't think it's too dramatic to say it saved me. It's Gregory Orr, and I just put it to a little tune so I could keep it with me. Not to make loss beautiful, but to make loss the place where beauty starts. 
where the heart understands for the first time the nature of its journey. Not to make loss beautiful, but to make loss the place where beauty starts. Where the heart understands for the first time the nature of its journey. I'm so grateful that he wrote those words because it really helps me to know that I never ever need to think of the loss itself as something beautiful. Um, I can't even imagine that. But, and it is an invitation to engage in a very beautiful ways with each other and with the world, even with ourselves. Um, and that's what I hope we do together tonight is we're going to explore how writing helps us to meet grief. By the way, it doesn't have to be beautiful. <laughs> there is zero expectation that anything you do tonight will be beautiful. And I want to also reiterate that there is zero expectation that anything we do tonight will be any good. In fact, let's just promise each other right now that not one of us will write anything good. And that all of us will in some way attempt to meet something true, whether that's something true that you write on a page or whether it's true that you just sit there with a blank page and feel. Any of those things are open to us. So this is what our time together will look like. I'm going to talk just a little bit about writing and grief. Then we'll read a poem and we'll talk about it. And then I'll offer some invitations for writing. We'll have about 15 minutes for writing. And in that time, you might write and you might not. And whatever happens is going to be okay. And then we'll talk a little bit about process. We'll do it all over. We'll read another poem. We'll talk about it. We'll go off by ourselves and write for 15 minutes. We'll come back. There'll be an opportunity for sharing and no one needs to share. But if you want to, you can. We'll have an opportunity for breakout rooms. And if that feels somehow too vulnerable or like something you really don't want to do, don't worry, you don't have to. We'll keep the, the large room open also so that if you wish, you can, you can just stay in this larger space. But you will have an opportunity to connect more intimately with each other if that's what you want also. And, and then we'll close. So this is, this is the map, the roadmap of where we're going together tonight. I want to say... A couple of things. One, that uh, the chat bar is open and please feel free to just communicate through the chat bar as we're going along. I'll do my best to follow along with that. And um, I think let's start by in the chat bar, please share the name of anyone that you're grieving right now. Or Perhaps it's not a person, perhaps it's a relationship, perhaps it's a place, but whatever brought you here tonight, whatever it is that right now you are looking to meet in your grief, please share that in the chat bar. And um, I have lit a candle here. And right now, as all of these names come through, I am imagining every one of them going into this light. Thank you for sharing all these names, these places, these relationships. I think many of you know that my own son, Finn, took his life two and a half years ago. And then my father died just three months after that. And so I was very grateful to have had, before that happened, a writing practice in which I show up every day. And I just wonder, 
what's here, what's here. And I have found that that practice, it's a very generous practice, I think, in that I don't try to write something good every day, but every day I ask myself, can you write something true? And I think the thing that's been so helpful then for me about writing is that it has allowed me to meet grief in a daily way with curiosity, what is here, what is here, and to really notice how much grief changes and how grief is so different for every one of us and also how different grief is from minute to minute sometimes. I'm imagining you notice this, that that it can be so deeply painful and then there's the spaciousness in it and then it's uh, there could be anger. There, there are so many components to grief and it changes so quickly. So part of the gift of writing is that it allows us to meet things in a very curious way, moment to moment, and notice how how much changes ourselves and the grief and, and even our relationship with the, who or or what we're grieving. And I think um, the other thing that's been so interesting for me is as I continually ask myself when I'm writing, what is true? What is true? What's the next true thing? This is how I write every poem is just by wondering, what is the next true thing? What is the next true thing? And then to notice that sometimes what's true, if you write the opposite, it's equally true. And I think poetry has been very helpful for me this way also. Um, and I think finally, it just helps me sometimes to be still, to just sit with a blank piece of paper. And I don't know about you, maybe you too, sometimes in an effort, not even because you're trying, but you can get very busy. And all of a sudden it's like, we try to push the grief over here, or we just manage to push the grief over here. And something gorgeous happens when we just sit is we can feel. And that's why I say, if tonight, when there's time for writing, if you just sit and don't write a word, and you sit and feel, that's really fine too. So I want to start with this little, very small prompt. I, I'm not sure how much experience any of you have with writing poetry. I know some of you quite a bit from the names I see in the group, maybe some of you none at all. And if in any way the word poetry is threatening or, or makes you feel anxious, let's just not use that word. Just imagine every time I say the word poem or poetry, just think writing. And that's, and if that's also making you nervous, then um, just don't even think about a word for it. But as, as we're um, wondering about how do I write about this, one way that I found helped me in again and again and again was just to fill in this sentence, today grief is and I'm going to invite everybody right now just to write in the chat bar again. And you could write many times. Today grief is, and you can fill it in with an object, like a metaphor, right? Like today grief is a chair. Today grief is a door. Today grief is an eraser. Or it could be with a feeling. Today grief is overwhelming. Today grief is... lonely. Any way that you can fill this in, and we'll just kind of create a spontaneous root poem doing this. And I'll read them as we go just to see how it feels. Today, grief is a hard rain. It's a distant monster. Grief is quietly waiting. Today, grief is overflowing with tears. Today, grief is a vibration in my body, a contradiction Today, grief is absent. Today, grief is an endless river of tears, bone-weary exhaustion, a damp, rainy, windy day. Today, grief is being heard, a weight in my heart. Today, grief is alive and well. Today, grief is a tear, a tumultuous flowing river. Today, grief is pulsing. It's my greatest teacher. It's quiet and gray, transformative. It's a spiral, it's tender. It's my gray shadow. Today, grief is a frozen river inside that I shudder to touch. It's composted feelings and deep loss, empty. It's very present. 
It's knowing it was her time to be in peace. Today, grief is underground, isolating. It's my son, Dan. It's flowing tears and a feeling of abandonment and unanswered questions. It's right behind my eyes, a vast open meadow, riding alongside me, a tear and a smile. Grief is a deep well, the new cafe, hurting my head. It's too much work. It's scary and unwanted and sharp and clouds all around and winter rain that should be snow. Today, grief remarried at the front of the door, bearing a new message. It's deep in my muscles. It's emptiness. It's conversation with a friend. Oh, friends, I'm going to stop there, but that was so beautiful. Thank you. Notice how it was just a list and notice how powerful a list can be. If at any time today or in the future, you sit down and you want to start writing and you're stuck, this has been <laughs> endlessly helpful for me just to write this list. Today, grief is and maybe fill in many things and maybe just fill in one thing. Today, grief is a tight throat and just write about that. Today, grief is a jelly bean without its center and just write about that. So that's always available to you. Um, so we're going to read two poems today. And when I, I think there's really two ways that I think about grief in terms of when we, when I'm writing, I notice there's two main ways that I'm writing around grief. One is directly, uh, relating to the experience of grief. And the other is to relate to the person or the thing that I'm grieving. And they can be very different kinds of poems. So we're going to explore both of them tonight. The one we just did, obviously, today grief is, is what is the experience of grief? And we'll start with a poem by my beloved friend, James Cruz. I know many of you know him also. And uh, we'll read this poem. I'm going to ask two people to read it out loud. And if you would, please, um, raise your hand. I'm going to need you to put your, uh, you, since I'm not going to be able to see your hands, I'll need you to use the reactions bar to raise your hand. And I need two people, please, to volunteer to read this poem. And we have Susan Spangler and Tracy Moe. Um, so I'm going to ask each of you to read it in full. And as you listen, friends, the first time, maybe read along as, as Susan reads it first. Read along with her. You can even use your finger to kind of visually underline on your screen. And then the second time, go ahead and close your eyes. And as Tracy reads the poem, just let it wash over you. Let it land on you like a blanket. Notice where you feel it in your body. And when we come back after we hear it, we'll have a little conversation about what word or line or image stands out to you. And we can also talk about what um, what you notice rising up in you. All right, uh, Susan, if you would, please. Made visible. Some days I wish our pain was visible, that our grief gave off glimmer from the center of the chest, so that as we walked down the street, shifting a bag of olive oil and bread from one hand to the other, every passerby might see a glow lifting off of us like moonlight on the surface of broken water, and know to soften their eyes and whisper, hello. Thank you, and Tracy? made visible some days i wish our pain was visible that our grief gave off a slight glimmer from the center of the chest so that as we walked down the street shifting a bag of olive oil and bread from one hand to the other every passerby might see a glow lifting off us like moonlight on the surface of broken water and know 
to soften their eyes and whisper, hello. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Susan. Joy noted, so beautifully read. So I also put the poem in the chat bar, friends, so that you can see it right now while we're while we're talking about it and you can have it right there. Lisa, thanks for jumping in. What did you notice? Oh, I just love that that it's portrayed as as glow and, and it felt so positive and not the opposite that it so often feels like. Um yeah, that's that is just beautiful. Um and the last line to to whisper hello. Yes, because it's um I don't have the words for it, but it just it would feel really good. And that that poem captured that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Although I'm I'm hearing from from what you're saying that maybe you don't always think it feels like a glow. <laughs> um but yes, it is really positive portrayal of the of how James is imagining it could be. Betsy, thank you. And then Bridget after that. Yes, I I um I just felt this in what the previous uh, person described um walking through the grocery a bit ago. I can still five years out, it's like a, a neon sign that says bereaved parent, something like that. And so this in such a contrast um, just really immediately softened me and felt like what I would like for it to be. So thank you for leading with that one. Yes. Oh my goodness, Betsy. I imagine almost all of us have had that moment in the grocery store where James puts us, right? Where you do feel so exposed and so raw and wouldn't it be something if this has how it were? Um, Bridget and then Susan. Hi, thank you. Um, it is very easy to walk around and, and know that our feelings are invisible to those around us. Um, and Katie Lang wrote a, wrote a poem and made it into a song. Um, and the chorus is, we walk in good company. And that's what this brings up is that everybody walk, is walking around with their own grief or trauma and we really do walk in good company but we're not it's not visible and, and the glow would certainly fix that until there is until that technology comes around yeah the trust that we're walking in good company Bridget, what a beautiful, beautiful way to say this, to trust we're in good company, to know when we're walking around in the grocery store, how many other people are also feeling a great loss. Yeah. And we are, when, when we're in a communion as we are here, you know, in this group right now, um, we were just saying, Jenna and I, before we got on, that there is something so... Well, I'm going to say wonderful about meeting other people who are sharing an experience and we know, oh, they understand on some level, right? They're, that we're in this together. Yeah. Thank you, Bridget. Susan and then Diane. Um, hi, Rosemary. Um, thank you uh, for that little, little gem of a poem. And it reminds me, uh, well, it, the over... Uh, to me, the the large feeling that I get from that poem is respect that that we are carrying a um, a giant burden, and it reminds me. And I've thought a lot about it lately. Um, there's a there's a book called "You Are the Mother of All Mothers" or something like that um, by uh, another poet. And when I first learned about that a few years ago, I I just uh, I couldn't sense that for myself and 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 now I do and I um I just uh yeah we lost our son and also to suicide and um sometimes I just 
have this sense of walking around and um i do feel that that sense of self respect that i you know i um i brush my teeth and i take a shower and i get through my day and i'm a grief counselor myself and um i would like respect for just living yeah so oh, Stephen, thank yeah. you yeah i would like respect for just yeah. living yeah that that my son died and um, I'm carrying that and all of us are carrying something so thank you thank you Susan mm -hmm. Diane and then Lisa and Louise and then that I think will be we all will have time for um, Diane um, well what I grabbed onto in these words was shifting olive oil and bread from one hand to the other um, so much of life is um, distant. So holding bread and holding olive oil is real enough to help me recognize that I am still here and I have to be here. And that's my comfort, olive oil and bread. And the grief is beyond that, and most often I'm resistant. I'm so glad you brought this up. I notice in this poem, too, how it is these very mundane details, the specifics of our life that tether us to the moment and um, <laughs> how important they are, how important they are for their tethering. Thank you for that. Uh, Louise, and then Joan, I'm sorry, we're, I'm going to have to, if you would like to put it in the chat bar, but I, we're going to have to go into writing after Louise, but what I promise I'll call on you first. If you put your hand up again, Louise, what this brought up for me was one of the first times I was in a grocery store after the death of my youngest child. And I could, it still makes me brings a lot of pain. People were disappearing into other aisles they you know it's like they didn't want to see me I almost felt like a leper and it was so hard and I do remember that um, I didn't complete the grocery list I just wanted to get the heck out of there but that whole thing about being how can we be present to each other's sorrow even to just nod ahead but not wheel the grocery cart away oh Louise Oh, my heart opens to you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that experience. And I know that you are not alone in that. Um, and so it is that there, are, I think a lot of us have these very painful moments of how we've been met in our grief. And this poem and the power of this poem is how it Im imagines what else is possible. I often think that it's... Um, it's, it's easy to rant against what we don't like and much harder to imagine or write into the world we do want to live in. And I think James has done something beautiful in his poem here in the way that he has imagined how we might meet each other. So I'm going to ask if you would please, Jenna, put the, um, well, actually, before you do, let me say just a couple of things. We're going to put a couple of writing invitations on the screen. And when we do that, uh, we'll have about 20 minutes to go off and do some writing. And in your writing, as you're writing, one of the most important things to remember is that you do not need to impress anyone, not even yourself. The Really, the point of our writing together tonight is to notice what's here. Just notice what's true, what's happening inside me. What do I really feel? And just write into the truth of that. That's all you need to do. Um, so we'll have about 20 minutes and I will call you back when it's time. You can write with your screen on or you can turn your screen off if you don't want to be observed. You can write with your hand or you can write on a, anything that works for you. Do that. So here's the prompt. And 
if you need to make it bigger on your screen, by the way, um, we'll be also putting it in the chat bar as well as the poem. So here are two ideas. And if you don't, don't like them, that's okay. Do whatever shows up for you. But here are two ideas. One, you might write about your own grief and loss, beginning with the same phrase James does. Some days I wish our pain was, or some days I wish my pain was. And then see what images or ideas come to you. So just steal his first line. You can always thank him later for it. Or how do you wish people would meet you? What do you wish they would say or not say? And what would it look like if we honored each other's griefs? It's 32 after the hour for me. So at 40, whoop, just changed. At 48 after the hour, we'll come back together. If you get stuck in any way, know that that's totally fine. Or, as William Stafford famously said, you can lower your standards.
in two more minutes. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. So we have some time now to talk about what happened. What did you notice about yourself just now as you were writing? Not sharing what you wrote, but sharing what you noticed about yourself. If you were stuck, let's talk about stuck. If something showed up, let's talk about that. If you were surprised, let's talk about that. If whatever happened, if you felt that you had a body, if you forgot that you had a body so often, I forget I have a body while I'm writing. And yet our body can be such a beautiful instrument for helping us know when we're touching the truth. So again, I'm going to invite you just to raise your hands and we have a nice spacious amount of time to talk about this practice of writing to meet grief. What did you notice? Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, it opened me up. It was just such a peaceful way in to explore my grief, it, which is very fresh. My 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 most recent grief is very fresh. And your beautiful prompt just gave me a little moment of peace to look inside and open up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. I often, I, I think there is a very natural impulse to shut down around grief. And so to this, to notice that opening is possible, um, I thank you so much for sharing that. Charlotte, you're on mute still, friend. I was drawn to the prompt of, about um, uh, how do I wish people would meet me? And what surprised me was the 
exploring the connection that I longed for took me to to places that I didn't uh, couldn't wouldn't have ever put together I don't think in a logical way and um it was um yeah I flowers <laughs> it was about flowers and it was just it was such a um kind of a very gentle natural part of the natural world teaching me it was just very beautiful thank you well, lovely so that you actually had this noticing that the natural world had something to a way to teach you about how to meet grief this is so beautiful you know i'm so glad you brought this up charlotte so much has shown up for me through metaphor this way by just mm -hmm. noticing you know today today grief is a flower and then wondering what do you have to teach me flower about what it is to meet life in this moment mm -hmm. uh, thank you for sharing that and um mm -hmm. for sharing that moment of surprise too i think it's so courageous friends to write every single one of you is so totally brave to show up and wonder what's here mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that i love that there was a tenderness in it cynthia and then lisa My family just got home, so Allison, I need a few minutes. Okay, sweetie. Okay. Sorry. Um, that was Allison. She's my granddaughter, um, who I'm raising with my husband because her mom passed away about almost five years ago. Um, the thing that brought it brought up for me when I use the prompt some. For a long time after Kelly died, I told everybody, somebody in the grocery store, you know, I, 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 I mean, if it came, if something came up to indicate, like I had Allison with me, I would, I would tell people. Um, okay, please continue. I'm sorry about that. But then writing, as I was writing this, I wish my pain, and it was like I wish I allowed it to be visible. You know, I wish. Um, I wish when Allison came to me crying, saying, I miss my mommy, rather, you know, more than just hold her, I wish I could cry with her, you know, and I, I just keep, I keep it all buried. So, yeah. So we're able to see that, that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and how natural that is. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And Lisa. Thank you. Um, the moment I started writing uh, some days, I wish my pain was, I felt my head opening and my heart and everything just unfolding and opening and acquiescing to whatever came up. And, um, I instantly saw images and metaphors and two of them were like very tender and gentle, um, positive in a way. And one was dark and angry and violent. And that was the one that found its way in the middle of these three metaphors. And I, I just found it um, so important to let all the aspects of grief be together and, and to not hold any of it back. And they, you know, um, the angry, darker edges of it can can coexist with um, the parts of grief that want us to be soft and um, accepting of it, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Lisa, I'm sure that everyone here knows exactly what you mean. <laughs> and and this is the thing, too. I think that the, a poem is a place where all of that is possible at the same time, just like it is in our experience, Right. That we really do meet it all at the same time, or maybe just like so fast sequentially that we couldn't possibly tell where one ends and where one stops. So this this ability to write it in this moment, and also to know that if we took the same prompt tomorrow, or in five minutes, or in ten years, it'll be different, or or maybe it won't be, but chances are it will. 
Um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, just this full spectrum of what we're able to meet sometimes. Uh, we'll have Marjorie. Hi, thank you. Um, I guess what I noticed about the experience of the writing was the way my own perspective was shifting back and forth from inside to outside, to what's showing and what other people are seeing and what I'm feeling on the inside. Um, and I believe it was you, as somebody brought up, we don't know what everybody else is feeling. They may have their own hidden grief or you know, uh, other, the whole range of um, experiences that we could all be having and we're all just shopping in the store, you know? And um, so to try to remember that, I think is important to ha just have that be kind of a, a constant awareness that everyone is having their own um, you know, whatever it is, our own individual hallucinations of of our lives, whatever they are, um, and and we just don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of I had an encounter with somebody on a Saturday night, and then learned on Sunday that they had just their their grandson had just lost his girlfriend in a, a horrifying way. Um, and that that was really fresh for her during the encounter that we had had, which I was interpreting in a certain way, you know, negatively toward her. And it, it just changed everything to know that somebody used the word raw, that she was just raw from that, that trauma and, and, and shock. Yes. Beautiful. So how do we allow ourselves to become increasingly compassionate? Because we know, we know. And also another thing I love about what you said, Marjorie, is that in your poem, and I think poems are very good at this, at addressing what's happening inside us and outside us both. You know, a poem longs to be part of both worlds. And so when I, whenever I sit down and I write a poem and I'm open to this curiosity, what is here? I'm thinking, what is here inside and what is here outside? And allowing the poem to be a bridge between these two worlds and how we inhabit them both. Um, I think we have time just for one more comment. Emily and Aida, I see your hands up, but if you would go ahead and put it in the chat bar, I'd appreciate that. And Vicki, if you'd like to share something about your process. Thank you. Actually, the very last thing you said was my experience of my writing where the first three, I, I used the prompt, if we honored each other's griefs, the first three paragraphs were outward behavior or what I wish people would say. But the last one, it moved toward the inner attitudes. And I took a workshop with you once before in which, or you said it again this evening about uh, naming a truth and then what if the opposite were true? And I had that experience, not intentionally, it just flowed. I wrote, if we honored each other's griefs, we would assume that pain is being carried day after day, maybe forever, or we'd make no assumptions at all. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. The way, <laughs> look how that or worked for you, just to, to show what is also possible. So lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Emily, thank you for putting your your comment in the chat. And Aida, thanks for the same. Um, and I wanted to let you, welcome back, um, Jenna. <laughs> I know you're back. I'm glad you're here. And just so you know, Jenna, I did hit record again. So it should, this is also recording into the cloud. So we'll have two recordings uh, uh, that we can send out to everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone, for sharing um, your experiences with writing. Uh, it's interesting to me that no one mentioned that they were stuck, uh, although I'm a thousand percent that with almost 90 of us here, that at least a few people were stuck. I just want to honor that stuck is part of it, that every time I sit down to write, probably 98% of the time I sit down to write, I get stuck and 
it's not a problem that just being stuck is part of that process. And, and then noticing the ways that we become unstuck. I want to notice also that for me, the ways that I have been able to show up for a blank page and wonder what's here and notice what happens when I'm stuck and notice how, what happens when I'm unstuck. That has had everything I think to do with the way that I've been able to meet grief also. And so that writing as a practice has been exceptionally helpful for me in showing up, not just to a blank page, but to meeting loss. And the more we do it, I think the more true that is that we could, there's a, um, a fluency, a fluency that can come. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm really not saying that, but a trust, a trust that happens, a trust that we can show up, a trust that we can be curious, a trust that we will not stay stuck forever. And that trust has been so important for me um, in a writing practice and in a grief practice. Let's look at um, the next poem. And if you would, please, Jenna, uh, put between when you are here and when you are not on the screen. And I'm going to ask again for two readers. Thank you, Denise. And thank you, Andrea. And thank you, Jenna. All right, Denise, take it away. Again, the same thing. The first time you hear it, maybe read along, use your finger on the screen, and the next time you hear it, just close your eyes and let the poem wash over you. Uh oh, Denise, I can't hear you. Right. I think you're talking, but I'm not hearing you. Um, let's see. Sweet friend, I'm going to go ahead and call on Andrea um, to go ahead and read, and then one other volunteer, please. Okay. Between when you were here and you were not. There is a room inside me, a room the shape of love, a room the shape of laughter, a room the shape of tears. It is furnished with softest blankets, and there is country music playing, and sometimes cello, and sometimes the Canadian national anthem, and sometimes it is quiet. There is sweet tea, and chai tea, and popcorn with butter, and yeast, and salt, and candles, and bonsai trees that thrive. We built this room together, built it the same way we built sandcastles on the beach in the Caribbean, the same way we built tractors, and front loaders out of cardboard and straws and brads, the same way we built an intimacy out of breakfasts and trundling rocks and looking, looking for dinosaur bones. Though you are gone, the room is with me everywhere I am, and I enter it whenever I need to rest in the space of you, here and not here. Here as I write this poem, not here as I set the table, here between holding on and letting go. Not here when I turn around. Here between a heartache and healing. Here between forever and now. Thank you, friend. What a beautiful reading. Thank you, Andrea. Um, and Bridget, would you read it again, please? There is a room inside me, a room the shape of love, a room the shape of laughter, a room the shape of tears. It is furnished with softest blankets, and there is country music playing, and sometimes cello, and sometimes the Canadian national anthem, and sometimes it is quiet. There is sweet tea and chai tea and popcorn with butter and yeast and salt and candles and bonsai trees that, sh that thrive. We built this room together 
built it the same way we built sand castles on the beach in the Caribbean, the same way we built tractors and front loaders out of cardboard and straws and brads, the same way we built an intimacy out of breakfasts and trundling rocks and looking for dinosaur bones. When you were gone, the room is with me everywhere I am, and I enter it whenever I need, to, whenever I need to rest in the space of you, here and not here. Here as I write this poem, not here as I set the table. Here between holding on and letting go, not here when I turn around. Between heartache and healing, here between heartache and healing, here between forever and now. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. I have the poem in the chat bar too, if you want to look and see it there. And you can pull out any word or phrase or image that stands out to you or notice something about how it made you feel. Do you notice about this poem? Again, go ahead and raise your hand using the reactions bar. I'll say that um, it does what we were just talking about. It has that what's true and then the paradox of what's also true, right? How are you here and not here? Here as I write this poem. Not here as I set the table. Just noticing these, these two, how they're both so true at the same time. Uh, Andrea. What a gorgeous job you did reading. Thank you. Um, you're on mute though, friend. Can't hear you yet. Um, it's such a beautiful poem. It really speaks to the experience, or at least my experience um, as well. Um, this concept of both here and not here. I lost my wife two years ago and um, I talk to her all the time, but there's that thing of like the experience of like yeah it's like i i cook for one person i i my life is completely different from the life that we live together and there's that that sense of like both the here and the not here it's like she was a breast cancer research nurse and i just got diagnosed with breast cancer like four months ago and i'm like where are you you know um it just really really spoke to me thank you Thank you. And I hear that you have this additional um, thing to meet now with, with breast cancer and my heart opens to yours, Andrea. Here and not here, the paradox of that. Uh, Linda and then Merb. Yes, the poem is incredibly powerful for me. Um, I lost my husband. For um, just a few months ago. And the thing that's hardest the most is the, the physical presence is gone. And while I can speak to him, his spirit, it's the physical presence is unbearable because you know, we were together so much and we did so much. And just like Andrea shared, just missing the person's presence, it, it's its all of a sudden, it's just so hollow and empty. And uh, it's very hard to figure out how to move on from that. So I know it takes time, but, you know, when you were married for you know, almost 40 years, it's unbearable. So, but anyway, the poem was really beautiful. It touched me in this way where I got in tune with the physical, lack of his physical presence. So thank you so much for the poem. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Yes, it's so hard, just as you say. That absence is so, thank you, Linda. 
and Merb. Hi, hope you can hear me okay. Um, I'm very new to grief. I lost my 26 year old daughter weeks ago um, to melanoma. And she was sick for two and a half years. Anyway, the last six months I was her primary caretaker. And basically we lived in her apartment together in California while I live in Santa Fe. Um, the hair and the not hair, it's a, wow, a split universe. So it really spoke to me that when I was with her, we slept in her bed together care of her like when she was a baby, like we full circle. And that here, not here, and the rooms we created, that really got me because I have my life here at home. And my husband also has cancer. And so there's that room. And then there's the room I shared with my daughter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. In those intimate moments together in her room, in her bed, the room you made together. Yeah. The other rooms you're asked to inhabit also. There are so many beautiful comments in the chat bar too. I want to just invite you to read them. And I'm going to um, go ahead and put a invitation to do some writing. Oops, in the chat bar. And also Jenna, if you would put it up on the screen. Um, in this poem, I created a room in my heart where my son always lives and I filled it with the things that he loved. Isn't it hard friends to choose a tense? <laughs> I hate using the past tense, <sighs> but here's an invitation to imagine a space inside you where your loved one always lives and write about that space and include the things and the people and the places that that person loved. Include special memories, include favorite foods and sounds and smells. That's idea one. Just build that room in your heart and know that it is always there. And another idea is to write about your loved one's favorite room and describe it. And what did they like to do there? What is it like to be in that space now that they are gone? And how are they still in that space or not? Uh, I love, <laughs> I love that you just threw in that giant is with an exclamation mark. Barry, thank you for that. Um, so here are two ideas. I'm also going to just suggest that one thing that I do, you know, how I mentioned that to meet grief, I often just say today grief is um, to invoke uh, my beloveds who are not here anymore, whether it's my son, Finn, or my father, or my grandmothers, or whoever it is. I just write them a letter. So that's an option right now, too. And we're going to take 15 minutes again to do some writing. And again, please feel free to use either of these invitations or write a letter to your beloved or do whatever else has juice in it for you. Whatever feels most alive in this moment, follow that. Whatever you do, you can only do it right. We'll be back together at 30 after the hour.
in two more minutes. Not to make loss beautiful, but to make loss the place where beauty starts, where the heart understands for the first time the nature of its journey. Welcome back. So we have time now for sharing or not. So sometimes this is the moment when I watch the participants go, everybody, who's <laughs> you don't have to leave friends. If, if you would rather not be in a small group, don't worry, you can stay in the main group. Uh, if you would like to be in a small group, we're going to put you in groups of three. I'll just say that because some people will elect not to go into the groups, it might take just a little bit of time for them to be um, created. So if you go into a small group and you find that you're by yourself, don't worry. Jenna's going to put you in a group <laughs> with someone else. Just wait just a little bit. But let's just say she didn't. And let's just say that for 15 minutes, you found yourself alone in a small group. You could have a conversation in that moment and read to your beloved the, the poems that you wrote or talk to them about the process of writing um, and use it as a chance to to connect with the person who's not here. But I don't think that's going to happen. I believe you're going to find some real people in this room with you, probably two other gorgeous human beings who also are meeting their own griefs. In these small rooms, this is what will happen. You have the chance to be a guide, a listener for the other per people. And I'm going to ask you to promise me and yourselves and each other that you will not offer any kind of feedback, not positive and not critique. <laughs> I'm going to give you, and I'm going to put them in the chat bar right now, some questions that you could choose to ask. Um, if you're the person who shares, you have the chance to share one of the poems that you wrote. You'll have about four or five minutes. You could share one of the, and I say poems loosely, share one of the things that you wrote uh, or just share a part of it. Just share the part that feels safe enough to share or don't share any of it and just talk about your process. Just talk about what's coming up for you tonight. That would be perfect also. You don't have to share and or say, I'm just here to listen and share nothing. All of those are open to you, okay? Um, if you are a listener, I've just put into the chat bar some ideas for questions that you could ask. So let's just say somebody just shared something that they wrote, and here are a few ideas for things that you could ask them. Say, what surprised you about the writing process? 
Or were you ever stuck? What did you do then? Or what feels most true to you? Or what part was the most difficult to write? Or where else do you think this might go? Or what did you notice about your own writing when you read it? Or what questions do you have about your own writing process? Or you can choose a line from their writing and say, tell me about that. But notice how all of these are you asking them a question so that they can more deeply explore their own experience. And that, as listeners, is what we're here for each other to do tonight. And before we go into these small groups, um, and even if you stay in the big group, here is what I'm going to ask you. I, I have adapted this from Bill Plotkin of the Animus Institute, and I'm going to ask each of you to say these words right there in your own room. Of course, no one can hear you because you're on mute, but go ahead and say these words um, out loud as a promise to yourself and to each other. Are you willing to listen? With the ears of your heart, to the other voices of yourself speaking. And with that promise to yourself and to each other, we're going to invite you to go into small groups and we're going to do a voiceover. So after about four and a half minutes in your group, you will hear Jenna's voice come through and she'll say, time to change. And then you'll change. So, um, We'll see you back in 15 minutes and be safe with each other. Create such a tender space, please. Jenna, I'm just checking that you're here and making those groups. well maybe she's not in which case <laughs> i'm going to figure it out <laughs> let's see there are i'm almost there <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> perfect thanks for jumping in <laughs> thank you friend um, and by the way, everyone, this is Jenna's first time doing this. So if we could all just send her so much love and appreciation for doing something that she hasn't done before, how nerve wracking that must be to be with 80, 80 some people doing that. And I am so grateful to you, Jenna, for doing this. You're getting cheers in the chat group, in the chat bar too, Jenna. <laughs> and hearts. Uh, the last question, and all of the questions are in the chat bar, was to choose a line from the person's writing and repeat it and say, tell me about that. Uh, let's see. The bill can quote is are you willing it's it's I changed it a little but it's something like are you willing to listen with the ears of your heart to the other voices of yourself speaking how are we doing Jenna I think I just opened all the rooms so I think everybody is assigned only. All right. So it looks like excellent. 
I think I did it. Wonderful. <laughs> you did it. I'm so proud of you. Way to go. All right. And in the meantime, we still have people here in the main room. Um, so if you are with us in the main room, um, I'm going to open it up for anybody who's here who would like to share together. And um, if you want to just listen, of course, please just listen. That's all you need to do. And if you'd like to share what you wrote, then this is a chance to do that. You would have to raise your hand though, uh, using the reaction bar. And Jenna, I'm just checking, did you check the time when people went in so you know when to give them a heads up? That would probably be one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have the timer. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Did anyone want to share about their process? We could talk about what happened or didn't happen while you were writing. Maybe I'll share what I wrote. Um, this came out of a experience from just before we got together. And um, we'd never met our neighbors before. They're fairly new and they came over. The title I chose was when they asked if we had more than two daughters. I told them our son died. They were, hold on before I go on, Jenna, you're going to, when you break in to tell everybody, go ahead and stop me. <laughs> okay, hon. Okay. When they asked if we had more than two daughters. I told them, our son died. They were sitting across from us, our new neighbors, the afternoon sun streaming in the room with low spring gold. Their grandson sat on the floor, a teaspoon, the only toy I had for him, and he mouthed it with quiet joy. Was it an accident? She asked. He chose to take his own life, I said and the words hung in the air between dust that sparkles. And the words hung in the air between us, like the dust that sparkles and then seems gone. But it's never gone, is it, the fact that he's not here? It's never gone, the fact he made a choice that has never stopped breaking me open. The fact that once he sat with me on this couch and read books and watched movies and built pirate forts. They murmured, I'm sorry, because that is what people say when there's nothing else to say. And I realized I didn't need anything more. I won't pretend it doesn't hurt. But when the talk soon turned to bonfires and building permits, I did not mind that we did not linger. The room was aglow with his name, and I knew it was enough in that moment just to have said his name, to honor we have two daughters and a son. He was here. He is still here. Beautiful, my friend. Thank you. Do you need to break in to the rooms? Um, we're still eleven minutes. Do we? Have... Oh, you need to, but you need to tell them in between to change. Oh, um, oh they're that's gonna... the broadcast. Oh, okay. I thought I didn't know that they were. Um, 
they were changing too. I thought we talked about that. Oh, no, they'll just, just saying you need to not change rooms. Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> <They> just... <laughs> not change rooms, <laughs> just change the reader in the room. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> so what time did they start? Do you know? Yeah, um, uh, four minutes ago. So we, I can now- Let's Go ahead and break in and say time to change. So do you know how to do that? Go into the um, broadcast. So they get five, four minutes or five minutes each? Well, it so should be five, but it's more like four. And then it's really, truly more like what we have. So if you click on that broadcast, and then you should be able to say- Thank you. <laughs> Hi, friends. It's time to change readers now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so fun. I just love <laughs> how we need to be so specific. <laughs> oh. um, does anyone have any questions? for me about what I read, or does anyone want to share their own writing or their own process? And you can just jump in since I can't really see you. Nan, I think you're raising your hand. Go ahead. Um, I, I think something really surprising happened. Um, when I was, um, I wrote a letter to my husband and um, and I think the hard part was that um, I realized a sense of loss of something before he even died. And, you know, I, I, I think if I would have realized it then, we could have talked about it, but I only realized it now. And um, so, um, but I'm grateful, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for realizing that, so. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for sharing that. I noticed listening to you that you were able to say you were grateful for that understanding. Yeah. And sometimes I talk to him all day long, so I feel like I can talk to him about it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. but it really helps me. Thank you. Thank you, Nan. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else want to share about process? Or share something you wrote? Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Kathy. And I just wrote now. Um, today grief is unpalatable. I find loss goes and comes. I don't miss it. I am sure it will return. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't miss it. I am sure it will return. Do you want to share something about, was there anything that I know that um, we're going to have to interrupt just to, um, in about one minute, we're going to have uh, Jenna come in to make an announcement to the rooms, but 
my question to you is, was there anything that surprised you about what you wrote? I think today was such a good day that I didn't have space for it. I'd had a hard weekend and then along comes a good day. And so I just wanted to live in it. Yeah. And so I just wanted to live in it. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. You're very welcome. That's like the most beautiful quotes I've ever heard, Kathy. Thank you so much. I'm writing that down and quoting you, and I may hang that on my wall. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Hello, friends. Um, last five minutes of breakout rooms. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. I totally honor that you are doing something so out of your comfort zone and getting to feel all the feels at the same time. And I just celebrating you and thanking you and honoring you for showing up with so many hats on tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone else, we have time for one more person to share about process or share what you wrote. Hi, Joan. Thank you. You're on mute, sweet friend. I went to a room and then somehow I came back, but I don't know. <laughs> um, this Your poem about uh, the room um, really touched me because I was just thinking, uh, my wife died about seven years ago, and I am thinking I may have to sell the house that we lived in together sometime in the next few years. And I had been just yesterday walking around the house thinking, how could I ever leave this house? Because it feels like uh, the laughter that was bouncing off the walls is still here and the love is still here. And I can still visualize her in the bathtub reading a book, or I can still hear the, the wheels on her large easel rolling across the wood floor when she was painting and the cotton maker waking me up in the morning and uh, you know so all those things that you your your poem was so meaningful to me because I was just doing a walkabout in the house thinking how could I live somewhere else how could I leave this be behind um and even though those sounds aren't here uh, on the walls um we I'm a professional photographer she was a neurologist but then she became a paint oil painter so we that's what we did together as we we would travel and I would photograph and she would paint. So our walls are full of my her paintings and my photographs and every one of them has a story. I can remember when she painted that in France and what we had for dinner that night and you know I can they're like uh, the archives of our lives. So I I just when you were I was you were reading your poem I thought I will I still will be able to take that I'll have those rooms with me, even if I have to uh, sell the house, but I still feel, so I was trying to write about that, but there was just this resistance <laughs> that I don't want to have, just in the same way that when people say, oh, she's in your heart, and you think, oh, that's not where I want her to be, <laughs> you know, I want her sitting next to me, so it's that same resistance, I don't want to have these rooms uh, in in my heart or in my head, and so I, I was I was trying to write through that resistance <laughs> of it's a great idea that I can take this place with me. I can always have a room like you always have that room with you uh, full of your 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 son's favorite things. But for me, it's just um, it's it's not enough. <laughs> it's like saying, well, she's in your heart. And I hate when people say that to me. <laughs> Um, so anyway, my, my process was 
fighting through, hey, that's a good idea. I can have that room always with me, but that's not what I want. <laughs> and that's not what I want. And friend, th writing that too mm -hmm. is just as real, right? I don't want you in a room in my heart. I want you right here. Yeah. Right? Just writing what is most true. I don't yeah. want you. I don't want you in my heart. I want you here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have you in my heart. I want you here too. Yeah. Just to write. I want, the to, keep the, I want to keep living in this house. I want to keep living in this house. I don't want this to change our house. <laughs> and so our life. that, right? The just the truth of that. Letting that you don't you don't have to tie anything up with the pink bow. You don't have to make it okay. Right, yeah. you can stay messy, and you can write it messy, mm -hmm. and you do not have to fix anything, and just write what really is true. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, and Jenna. I just want to. I think it's probably time to call folks back. Hey, friends! Y'all are going to be shot through the ether back to us in just a second. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Oh, Joan, thank you for sharing that. And I love that you brought up that resistance because it's, there it is. It's what's true. Yeah. Right. You, and, and I'm so glad you brought up, you know, we, we don't have, yes, we can write through it or we can write right into it. Mm -hmm. Hello, resistance. And because it's the truest thing, continue yeah. to honor that. Thank you so much. That was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone who chose to stay in the big room or who ended up here without knowing how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're all here. Thanks for braving it out and staying. Mm -hmm. And I noticed Kim Marie says, thank you. I'm just listening in for my granddaughter's gymnastics practice. Fabulous. Taking in deep beauty and trying not to cry. <laughs> it feels like a secret place. I will take it in deeper and write with the recording. It is nice to just listen and be with all my feelings. Thank you, Kim Marie, for showing up at gymnastics and also here in our Zoom room at the same time. And welcome back, friends. Oh, welcome back. Okay. Just wait a second as everyone repopulates in our room together. All right, friends, we have just a few more minutes. Um, so I wanna start by saying thank you to Jenna. I wanna say thank you to Joyal, who is the founder of Evermore and to Jean, who is the other, the third J in, <laughs> in who keeps Evermore together. I wanna to thank every one of you who showed up. Thank you for showing up with your ears and your hearts and your voices. And I'm going to open it up for people to share what I, my friend Augusta calls pearls. If there's something that you're taking away with you from tonight, maybe it was a line from a poem, maybe it was one of your own lines from one of your own poems or an epiphany you had, I'm going to invite you to put it in the chat bar. It's also possible that we have time for maybe one or two people to share something um, right now. If you want to use the reactions bar to raise your hand, and if you want to share something that you're taking away from tonight, Diana, hi friend. Hello, sweet friend. <laughs> um, I want to just thank you. This was such a beautiful gathering, and um, 
and for me very very healing and so what i what i have felt um, was the deep heaviness of some of the grief i have felt with losing some very close um, people in my life and the room the the all the exercises the prompts opened up the spaciousness inside where the light came in it wasn't the dark dim but there was more there was compassion and love and connection so deep gratitude rosemary thank you thank you diana and to my to the person who listened cynthia she was great thanks mm -hmm. thank you lisa eisenberg i saw you had your hand up and then you disappeared so i don't know if you were trying there she is you're on mute though sweet friend You're still on mute, darling. I can't hear you. There you go. Okay, sorry. Um, just a just a question um, for everybody. How it feels to be in a in a room with eighty people who you know are going through something similar, and the person who just spoke spoke to that, and I I can say that it's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing um, because I, I do crave that connection and it feels so isolating our own, my own grief. And so I just, yeah, I'm just so curious what, what everyone feels. Thank you for bringing the question in, even though we don't have time to answer, but, but to just feel it, to feel into Lisa's question, what is it like to be in communion with other hearts. Um, there's really beautiful comments in the chat bar and I'm going to invite you to read them. I know that we are one minute away from the time we said we'd end and I'm going to honor that. But I'll take us out, I think, by just singing again this little song from Gregory Orr's poetry. We will be sending you a recording and we'll be sending you the poems that we read tonight as well as the invitations that went with them. And we'll be doing this again in July and September and December. I hope you'll join us again. We'll also be sending you the chat. So if you don't get a chance to read it all right now, we'll have a chance to read it again later. Um, and I'll go ahead and sing this contrapuntally. So I'll sing and you can sing back. Please make sure you're muted because otherwise it makes such a noise. <laughs> but if you'd like to sing along with me, I'll, I'll leave space for that. Not to make loss beautiful. But to make loss the place where beauty starts. Where the heart understands for the first time. The nature of its journey. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you. And thank you evermore. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rosemary, very much. Thank you, Rosemary. And Jana. Thank you, Rosemary. And Thank everyone. you, my little group. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Rosemary. Everyone. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Big hard hugs to everyone. Thank you. Beautiful healing space. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for opening your hearts to us. Good night.